Kaya, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. How did you come up with the idea for Lechnex? Um, there's a long story and a short story. So the long story is that um, in college I studied international relations and politics and I spent a couple years after I graduated abroad in South America and India working on global human rights issues. I started a PhD in international politics. But when I got to the PhD after having spent two years really on the ground doing direct service work, um, that ivory tower academia environment just wasn't for me. So I spent two years in that degree program and it was 2007 and just at the cusp of the big 2008 presidential election. So I left and that got my start in politics working for Hillary Clinton in 2008 and when that campaign ended spent two years on the ground in New Haven, Connecticut doing hyper local politics, city council races and mayoral races. And so part of my story is the striking disparity that I saw in knowledge, engagement and participation between how people interact with politics particularly at the national level, and how they interact with it at the local level. So I was running city council races that I won by 12 votes or lost by 19 votes. And these were people who had real effects on education, crime policy, tax policy, in a, in a way that you know very closely and intimately affected people's lives. So that was number one, just the observation that at the local level it is incredibly difficult to stay on top of politics. And the short story is I just had a very personal experience with this. So after spending three years on the ground working on campaigns, I moved to Philadelphia to start an MBA at Wharton. It was 2010. It was a big midterm election year. And I got so busy with my program and my new city that I missed the voter registration deadline, had no idea who was running anyway, and couldn't vote and didn't participate. And it was such a shocking and personally disappointing moment when I realized that I had missed it, um, that I thought to myself, wow, if it is this hard for someone who really cares about politics and has been really involved, then of course it's this hard for everybody else. Um, so let's think of a solution. Awesome. Um, and do you consider yourself a social entrepreneur? Absolutely. So first and foremost, particularly with Elect Next, um, we are a mission-driven company. It is our goal to serve every voter in every election and allow him or her to easily um, vote his or her values all the way down their ballot. Um, that is the kind of primary driver um, of this organization. And yes, we are organized as a company, so we want to create a sustainable business model to support that mission. And um, how connected are voters to the key ballot issues today? I think voters are most connected to key ballot issues in places where they're experiencing a personal pain. So if you are a head of household whose mortgage is underwater, or you are a student who's just graduated from college and saddled with debt, or you have a family member who's been sent uh, to war in a foreign country, all of a sudden those are the issues that become very salient. The housing crisis, um, the, you know, your debt situation, foreign policy. Um, where it's harder for voters to stay connected is with all of the other issues that still are very, very important um, when it comes to choosing you know, our elected representatives, but may not be as salient in terms of a pain point. And that's what Elect Next is really trying to help people do, is to keep tabs on that whole array of issues um, that ultimately you will care about and that will become relevant within um, a, a political term or an election cycle. Do you think there are any um, specific issues that people from the younger generation are looking towards the next election? Anything that stands out to you as um, something that kind of encompasses the entire like younger generation of voters? Yeah, I mean, I think that the number one thing that I'm hearing is is really about education policy. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that spans from the kind of um, you know, primary or even high school levels up to, you know, higher education. So, um, you know, the charter school movement um, is becoming a really hot topic in kind of innovation in, in education, in public education. And then when it comes to higher education, there's all kinds of, you know, talk, debate, conversation about is this the right structure? What's going on with tuition? Um, is it worth it to have student debt? What are my employment opportunities? Yeah. And how do I weigh the costs and benefits of these decisions? And so I I think that that is going to be, um, you know, the, so far it has been the number one um, kind of topic on the minds of, of people of, of the younger generation yeah. today. Um, and this site helps users create a political preference profile is what you call it. And what exactly is that? 
Yeah, so um, it really is exactly what it sounds. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to um, figure out who you are politically. And the way that we do that on Elect Next, um, it's it's a very straightforward process. We first ask you which issues are most important to you. We allow, we allow you to weigh them so we can get a sense of you know how important those issues are. And then we ask you some questions based on the issues that you've selected so that we can get a sense for the nuance within each issue and where you stand on particular questions. Um, so just like you might create a social profile else Mm -hmm. um, or a dating profile on a dating site, um, this is your political profile, and that's what we're trying to create on Elect Next. Um, as momentum builds towards the presidential election later this year, um, what trends are you seeing? Yeah, so I think there are really two big um, defining characteristics of this cycle. One is the money. Mm -hmm. um, so with you know various rulings on campaign finance in you know, recent years, basically what you're seeing is the ability for um, corporations and wealthy people to donate unlimited amounts of money and to not have to immediately disclose um, those donations. And so you're seeing unprecedented levels of spending. Um, and and largely that is manifested in um, television advertising and negative television advertising in particular. Um, so that's been already a defining characteristic of this year. The other piece of that is data. So that's much more um, under the surface and not nearly as apparent to a viewer or a consumer of you know this election cycle. Um, but you know, technology is in a place where um, people are creating these these profiles on Facebook and Twitter and and elsewhere, and you know. Um, consuming inter, uh, information online, sharing information online, and interacting with you know, campaigns and um, companies and marketers and, and all of these ways that's allowing um, political organizations to create incredibly detailed profiles um, on who you are. And that underlying data structure is, um, has, has been a defining characteristic of this campaign. And in my opinion, you know, the candidate who wins the data race is going to win this election. So just kind of concerning data and the new technologies that are influencing this election, do you think that ElectNex is going to be incorporated with some of the social media platforms people already use, such as Facebook or Twitter or Google Plus? Or do you think it'll be an alternative or kind of used at, like aside from these already set up platforms? Sure. So right now, um, we're pretty independent of any mm -hmm. existing um, social platform, but that's really due to the fact that we're pretty new. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then what we've got out there is kind of what we consider our, our minimally viable product. It's, you know, the um, uh, sort of level of sophistication that allows you as a, as a voter or an end user of Elect Next to see the value, mm -hmm. but it's just step one for us. And absolutely, we want to get to a place where we are much more tightly integrated uh, with Facebook and Twitter and, and Google Plus and, and even some of the other platforms that are out there, for sure. In general, do you think that young people are engaged in voting and the election process, or do they have apathy towards these issues? Um, I do think that people are engaged and they certainly want to be engaged. Mm -hmm. And I think that th that sort of that time, um, of, you know, end of high school, beginning of college, those first years when you're eligible to vote, um, at least recalling them in my own personal experience were a real time of sort of engagement and awakening. And it was extremely exciting mm -hmm. to all of a sudden um, be paying attention to issues and to be able to take action based on my opinions and my perspective on those issues. Um, at the same time, there are incredible competing demands on people's time and attention. Um, you know, yes, all the information is out there, but yes, lots of distracting information is also out there. And there's this new book out actually um, called The Information Diet by Clay Johnson, and his you know, basic analogy is, um, you know, if you put all the food that you could possibly eat in front of somebody and they went ahead and consumed it all, um, then they would be fat <laughs> and have health problems and really have gotten themselves into a disastrous state. Well, that's the exact same thing that's going on with information. Um, all this information is out there and people are just consuming it, but what are they consuming? Are they doing it in a healthy way? And is it resulting in a person who is actually sort of informed and able to engage? And so, you know, the information diet is this idea um, that we should be really selective and careful about what it is that we're consuming, particularly online. Um, so, you know, if I could give any piece of advice, it would just be, you know, think before you click. Think about what it is that you're consuming and the fact that when, when you do consume something online, that means it is much more likely to show up in somebody else's feed or at the top of a hot news list. Um, and that's what's affecting what everybody else is consuming, too. 
Do you think that um, Electnex is sort of kind of a filter for the information diet or uh, I guess like a helper for the information? <laughs> that is exactly how we see ourselves. And I'm not affiliated with that book or that author yeah. in any way. Um, but that message really resonates with us because it is so aligned with our purpose. Um, is it important for teenagers to understand the voting process, including party choice, even before they reach a voting age? If so, why? Uh, absolutely. Um, so, you know, one of the, the number one um, kind of truths in American political science about how people vote is that the number one predictor about anybody's political choice is going to be the party identification of their parents. Mm -hmm. So if your parents were Democrats, you are most likely to continue to vote Democrat. If your parents were Republican, you are most likely to continue to vote Republican. In other words, our political choices are basically handed down from generation to generation. What was so interesting to me about working in the 2008 presidential campaign is I observed that flow um, of political identification re totally reverse and flip on its head. And students in high school and in college were, um, you know, for the most part, getting very excited about Barack Obama's campaign and convincing their parents to vote the way um, that, you know, they felt inspired or that they felt their allegiances aligning. And it was, it was just so incredible to me to, to watch that happen because it was such a fundamental shift in a paradigm that kind of political scientists at least have come to believe in. Um, so yes, I would say that you know, even before you as an individual can actually go out to, to cast a ballot on election day, you know, being informed, being engaged, being able to you know, make you know, interesting um, informed arguments and decisions based on the issues can have an effect on what ends up happening because you are able to, to talk to and to share your ideas with the people who can vote. And then of course, when your turn comes, then you're that much more um, ready because you have a history of participating. Cool. And um, what do you think the most valuable experience um, you had while working in politics? Um, well, first thing I say is everybody should do it. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was, you know, an incredibly important experience for me, and that doesn't mean that you know you have to do it for a year or as a career, or even full time. Um, but volunteering on a political campaign, whether it's presidential or your local city council, um, I think is, is sort of a must do for uh, any uh, any American citizen. Um, but probably the number one thing that I really got out of it um, was just understanding the extent to which. Um, political decision making has direct impact on our lives. Um, and really watching the way that effect shifts with the level of, um, of government that we're talking about, right? So um, it was one thing to be on a presidential campaign and be talking about things, you know, big ideas, foreign policy, the economy. Um, and it was a very different thing to be on a city council race in New Haven, Connecticut, where the issues were, you know, should we paint a crosswalk? Um, how should we fund this school? Should there be an, an after school program? Should the police force be doing driving beats or walking beats? Um, and just seeing how much of an effect on kind of day to day life those political decisions um, carry. Um, and that was probably my, my number one takeaway from politics, because when you watch it on TV, it can be very much theater. But at the end of the day, it's about people. Okay, cool. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having <laughs> me.